In this video, we're going to look at web servers and web browsers and explain how the information is retrieved and exchanged between them. And we're going to do that by stepping through this diagram, but a little bit of background. So web servers carry out many functions, but by far the most common is hosting websites and then dealing with requests from clients. For example, a HTTP GET request requesting a page to be returned to a user's browser. The web pages are stored on the server as text in, for example, HTML5, CSS and JavaScript. And then they're sent to a browser which uses rules to render and draw the web page appropriately. So let's step through how this works. So we start back here with the user and he's typed in a URL into a browser. And here we use an example, uh, craigandave.org slash index.html. So he types the web page into the browser. The browser first of all extracts what is known as the fully qualified domain name and it sends it to the DNS. So that will be the www.craigandave.org. So it will send it over here to a local DNS server. It's the DNS server's responsibility to map the fully qualified domain name to a matching IP and return it to the browser. Now in the previous set of videos we explained how this process is a little more complex but for now that will do. So the web address or the fully qualified domain name has gone over here. The ISP said oh yes we know what uh, computers holding that web page. It's at this IP and the IP gets returned to the client. Now the browser issues a GET request for the web resource and it actually can send the request to the specific um, server with that IP. The file is then returned to the web browser. But that's not quite the end of the story. The browser now renders, or effectively draws if you like, the contents according to HTML rules. But it doesn't stop quite there. It's highly unlikely that a modern web page will just have static text. It probably has images, it may well have um, movies, links to uh, embedded videos possibly from say YouTube, sounds and other, um, other assets. And these are all on the server. So if the file being rendered contains other URLs or graphics, the browser issues additional GET requests to obtain these resources and they'll get returned and then they'll get placed in the correct place. So you get an entire web page.